In this video, we're going to be looking at an alternative implementation of merge sort. This implementation might be one that naturally would come to you in the process of looking at an algorithm like merge sort. What do I mean by that? In the first algorithm, we split the array into two halves and we got some nice efficiency by sorting each half and then merging them. A natural continuation of that would be what if you split the array into three halves and sorted each third and then merged those thirds together. So the only difference between this implementation here and the previous merge sort implementation is that we are splitting it into thirds here. So hopefully we can maybe make some improvements for the runtime, but we will see what happens. Let's begin by first defining what we mean by the size of the array. Exactly like we've done several times before, we're going to let n, the size, be j minus i plus 1. So now let's compute the sizes of all of our recursive calls that we're making. We're getting, for this first recursive call, we have m1, which is i plus n over 3 minus i plus 1, which is about n over 3. And skipping a bit of the algebra, I trust that you can do this on your own. We could do something similar for the next two recursive calls. And again, the idea was that we're splitting this into thirds. So all of these recursive calls are about size n over 3. How about those two merge calls? Well, this is actually slightly different than what we saw before. This merge call, we're only merging the first third and the second third. So following the reasoning we had before, merge was in CN. So this would be 2CN over 3. Why is it 2CN over 3? Well, that's because we're only merging the first two thirds of the array, the first third with the second third. So it will take only two thirds of the time. Similarly, though, we are merging then the first two thirds with the last one third, and that will take cn time. One common trick that we've already mentioned several times is if I called this c prime of n and this c prime of n, that may help me out later, and we'll see what I mean, which is when we write down our recurrence relation, p of n equals, our additional cost would be 5 thirds c prime of n. So if we were to keep that 5 thirds around, it might be a bit messy. Instead, I'm going to call the runtime cn, where c is equal to 5 thirds c prime. It's a quick way to get around some, some annoying. So c equals 5 thirds c prime. And let's just be a little bit more mathematically rigorous while still ignoring a lot of the constants. Plus, if you take on faith that I did this correctly, again, I want you to quickly go through and compute those sizes when you do this on your own. We should have three recursive calls of size n over 3. All of those are, might be approximately n over 3, but that's okay. And exactly as we saw with merge sort, our base case is t of 1 is c. So let's march forward with some substitutions. t of n is equal to cn plus 3 times cn over 3 plus t of n over 3 over 3, which is n over 3 squared. t of n equals then. Let's distribute the 3, and we get cn plus cn. Let's group those together as 2cn plus I forgot a copy of 3 again, I apologize. 3 squared t of n over 3 squared. Let's do another substitution. t of n equals 2cn plus 3 squared times cn over 3 squared plus 3 times t of n over 3 squared over 3, which is n over 3 cubed. Let's distribute the 3 squared. We have t of n is equal to, I'm going to skip even more arithmetic here, distributing the 3 squared, we get 3cn when we group everything together, plus 3 cubed, t of n over 3 cubed. Now let's identify the pattern. Maybe we notice that t of n is equal to k c n plus 3 to the k, t of n over 3 to the k. 
Now we need to identify what value of k would cause us to terminate and reach the base case. So let us set n over 3 to the k equal to 1, which means k equals log base 3 of n. Let's use that fact. We have t of n is equal to plug in k, and we have log base 3 of n times cn plus 3 to the log base 3 of n times t of 1. t of 1, like we've seen several, several times, is just c. Do our little bit of arithmetic to simplify, and we have cn log base 3 of n plus 3 to the log base 3 of n is just n, so we have a cn there, which means t of n is in theta of n log base 2 of n. I wrote that very garishly because I want to drive a point home, which is this was in theta of log base, sorry, theta of n log base 3 of n. And that is the same as if it was log base 2. We gain no additional efficiency in terms of the asymptotic complexity by dividing the array into thirds instead of dividing it in half. This should make us more comfortable because if this added efficiency, then there are some very natural extensions that would add more and more and more efficiency. What I mean by that is if splitting it into thirds was better than splitting it in half, then splitting it into fourths would be better than thirds, and fifths would be better than fourths, and one one hundredths would be better than one fiftieths, and you would want to split the array arbitrarily into infinitely many parts to make it more efficient. So it is good and encouraging for our sanity as programmers that the number of splits that we do does not affect the complexity. So our merge sort, splitting into thirds, is exactly the same as if we had split it in half.